when I show you this square, this amazing square, this most useful square that I as a carpenter and a remodeler have ever used, I predict you will be, at first, a little bit underwhelmed. But hang in there because I think the beauty of this tool will become evident in time. This is it. It is a piece of PVC plastic, one eighth of an inch thick, right there. One eighth, it measures five inches this way, 10 inches this way, five by 10, it's square. And this piece of plastic can be written on. This is one of the features and benefits of this square. PVC plastic with a real lead pencil, not the fake composite lead uh, that so many cheap pencils are made of, but real lead. This, this uh, happens to be a um, uh, vintage pencil that I picked up at a yard sale. It will write on PVC like this. You can write notes on there. You can uh, draw diagrams on there. You can uh, make lists uh, on there. You can see this angle right here, this angle. You can take your uh, sliding T-bevel and make angles on there. Now right here, see this side? This side it has two sides too. That's, that's a good feature, right? This side here has all kinds of markings on it. And that side, those markings were made last year when I was putting cedar shingles on the side of my house. Came in very handy. The beauty of this PVC, not HDPE, PVC. There's a difference, and the difference comes when you go to write on it. The PVC, you can write on. You can even write on it when it's wet with a real lead pencil. It works great. And then when you're, you've got it filled with notes like that, by the way, this side looked like that a few minutes ago. When it comes time to clean it off, the best way to clean off lead pencil on this PVC is not any chemical, because I've tried them all. The best way to do it is with one of these uh, Sandflex sanding blocks. This is medium grit. It's perfect, it's perfect. Underwater, get, I don't mean underwater, but with running water coming down, scrub with this, comes right off. And you're all set to go. I'm gonna show you an application for this and how handy it can be. Now before I show you how useful this square is, and by the way, this is the Whizbang Carpenter Square, that's what I'm calling it, all tools need a name, right? Whizbang Carpenter Square. Whizbang is a word that means conspicuous for speed, excellence, or startling effect. And if you actually make one of these and put it to use, you will uh, realize that. Here we are, just a basic standard tool belt. Most tool belts have a big pocket, and the square can be taken out and put in quickly and easily. You don't have to watch. You don't have to try to fit your uh, combination square down in this little loop here. It's, this is even easier than putting a speed square here in the speed square slot, okay? Not to belittle speed squares, I have one. I often do use it. This is a different kind of square, different applications. It's just convenient, and now I'll show you how useful it can be. So what I'm gonna show you here as best I can without a, a cameraman is how I use this square when fitting this board into this window as a sill. Every carpenter has a different technique for trimming out of windows. This will show you some of my technique, but mainly I wanna just show you how this square comes into play. I generally start by cutting my board a little bit longer than it needs to be, and I wanna fit it in here. And now what I'm gonna do is butt it in here to this end, and I'm gonna mark where it is there, right? So then I'm gonna look at what my distance is here, it's nine inches. So then what I'm gonna do is split that in half. I'm gonna go four and a half here, four and a half here, and I can maybe show you here that the square can get laid right on here like this, and you can gauge with your fingers very well. 
for this purpose. And I'll mark it like that. Okay, do the same over here. See if we get this in here. Fingertips, one here, one here. It works. See that? I can put it right back in my pocket. Now I'm going to come over here just to continue with this concept. And I'm going to uh, measure how far I need to notch this. It's two and a quarter there. It's two and a quarter there. So I come here. I'll mark two and a quarter. Okay. And by the way, this is wider than it needs to be. I'll be cutting it down. And then I can come up here with a square and I can see, you can see the mark is right here. I want to draw it parallel here. So I can hold my finger against the edge here. I can gauge this and I can just go like that. Okay, so it's not just uh, for marking square. I can use it as a marking gauge. I'll do the same over here. You can mark and uh, like that. Now I'm not done. I'm going to go cut these and then I'll show you how else I can use this. Okay, so I've notched the ends and uh, put a couple blocks in here. I didn't want that sill all the way down. And I can then just fit this in there. It's nice and snug. And I will proceed to show you how I can use the square now. So the sill is in place here. And what I want to do is mark for the sides. So what I'm going to do is lift the window up, grab the square, and I'm going to use it here like a straight edge. See that? I'm going to bring it right down and make a mark right on the edge um, there. I'll do that on the other side too. Close the window. Now, I need to get a square mark off of here. And my uh, extension jam right here, I have a little piece. I don't want it right out flush here. I want it back. And I'll determine what looks good to me. I think right about there, it's about a quarter inch. And I'll mark it right on my, I'll cross that up. I'll mark it right here. And I'll mark it on the other side when I go over there. It's a simple process. So what I'm going to do then is come right up to this. We call this a reveal, this quarter inch roughly reveal. And I've got the square back here, and I just go like that. That gives me the place to position my extension jam. What I normally do, I should explain, is I build frames uh, in one piece, and I set them in. So over here, I'm marking on the other side of that. You can see right there, and I'm going to make a couple marks here, because I like to screw up through the bottom my uh, extension jams to the sill. I'll drill 1 8 inch pilot holes there before uh, I attach that. Now, again, I'm no, I want to reveal here. This is my um, casing. It's going to be 1 by 4. I don't want it flush out here. You always want a shadow line. You want to reveal. So I'll come back like that with this piece, and I'll make a mark over here. Are we getting this? Yeah, over here, which is where the uh, edge of that casing falls. And then I want to be an inch past that. Now, uh, I, I, can, I can eye up an inch. Uh, we'll say it's right there. And make that mark. And I have a mark here. When I get over there, I'll make it the same. So here I can go, I can just use this here. Um, it'd be better to use it off the front. But um, you get the idea. I can just come over here. I'll use the chop saw and cut that. So. You've just seen that I've used it as a straight edge here. I've used it uh, to square off of here. And uh, this, is, this is done, except for, of course, I'll figure um, an inch, inch and a quarter. Yeah, like an inch and a quarter for my windowsill. And I'll rip that on the table saw. And here again, if I want to make a little bit more of a mark, just to get a visual and uh, all of that, I can, I can do that. I'll rip that right there. So there you go. The Whizbang Carpenter's Square. Very handy tool. I've had this for 20 plus years. Still doing the job. This is a newer one that I made for my son. If you make one of these, you're going to love it. I'm pretty sure of that. If you liked this video, 
please give it a thumbs up and hit the bell and subscribe and do all those things that uh, people who like videos are supposed to do. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave the comments. Uh, I hope though that you will be nice. Remember the golden rule when you leave comments here. Thanks a lot everybody.